Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about malware hashing and why you should actually hash your malware samples. All right, so let's get started. So firstly, what is malware hashing? Well, malware hashing is the process of generating cryptographic hashes for the file content of the target malware. So in essence, you're essentially hashing uh, the entire content of the piece of malware or the sample. Now, the hashing algorithms used in malware identification or used for malware identification are MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256. These will all come into context in a few seconds. Now, the hashing process, after we've actually hashed a malware sample, it usually gives us a unique digest known as a fingerprint. And from then on, we can then begin to fingerprint all the various samples that we have. And I'll, I'll also explain why this is very important rather than using file names for your samples. Uh, so again, this means we can create un unique fingerprints for your malware samples. Now, when we talk about why you should actually hash your malware samples, firstly, for accurate identification of malware samples. So rather than using file names for malware, hashes are extremely unique. Now, you may run into, the, in, into scenarios where you actually have the same hash for different samples, but uh, the way to conquer that or the way to overcome that is to use two hashing algorithms. So uh, I would use uh, MD5 and then I would uh, also hash that into a SHA-1 for a better identification. All right, secondly, hashes are used to identify malware on malware analysis sites like virus total or hybrid analysis. So uh, if, as I'll show you uh, after we, we actually end with the slides, uh, you can actually use hashes to search for various samples and you can then uh, perform automated an analysis on those sites. And lastly, hashes can be used to search for any previous detections uh, by, again, uh, sites like VirusTotal or for checking online if the sample has been analyzed by other researchers so that you don't have to go through it or you can use their report uh, to help you in your own analysis. All right, so now that we understand uh, what a malware hashing is and why you should actually hash your malware samples, let's take a look at how you can do this. All right, so we are back in Flare VM and I'm going to be showing you how to generate your hashes for your malware sample. Uh, now, again, I am going to be using Flare VM for this. If you are doing this on a, uh, a clean Windows 7 install, I will be telling you the tools and uh, where you can download them from. So uh, one of the, the tools we'll be using is Hash My Files and HashCalc, and I'll be explaining how to use them. So again, we're using the same sample, the link to download the sample will be in the description section. So we had already extracted it. Uh, now with Flare VM, I can right click on it and immediately it allows me to uh, prompt uh, or open up hash my files and get the hashes immediately. Or I can use, uh, I can click on MD5 hash and I'll generate the MD5 hash. So uh, for example, if I use hash my files, I can open that up and I can go into file and I can add a file here, or I can just click on the, the sample directly from there, or I can drag it in. Now immediately it gives us the file name, the unique MD5 hash, SHA-1 hash, SHA-256, SHA-512, and SHA-384, right? Which is awesome. It gives us all the available options to use. So uh, you can download hash my files uh, from, uh, from nearsoft.net. Uh, the link will be in the description section if you're not using Flare VM. Uh, we can then also use HashCalc. So if I drag this onto HashCalc right over here, you can see that the data format is either in the form of a file or a hex string, uh, a file hex string or text, and then I can generate the various hashes. So for example, I can generate MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA and SHA-512. Let me get rid uh, of RIPEMD160 and we'll get rid of CRC32 uh, and I'll calculate this once again and immediately you can see we get uh, the MD5 hash. Uh, now, of course, uh, this will vary. All the uh, all pieces of malware all or all malware samples will have their unique uh, hashes here. Uh, so again, now that we know to generate hashes uh, with uh, FlareVM and the various tools that I've just shown you, Let's take a look at how we can use them on the various uh, automation sites like VirusTotal or the various malware analysis automation sites. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let me just get the hash one more time. I will get the MD5 hash so I can right click and click on MD5 hash. And this allows me to uh, essentially just copy the hash directly. And what I'll do is I'll open up my browser in Linux here because that's where I've logged in into VirusTotal. And if I go to search, you can see it tells us you can search uh, for a URL, IP address, domain, or file hash. 
So I will paste in the hash and hit enter. And this will tell me if this uh, piece of malware has been detected before. And, and as you can see, we have 58 engines detected this file and uh, we get uh, the information right over here. So we have the detection uh, based on anti the, uh, the various antiviruses. Uh, we then have the details. Now in regards to the detail, it gives you the corresponding SHA-1 and SHA-256 hashes. Uh, in regards to the file type, you can see it tells us it is a Win32 DLL file or dynamic uh, link library file. Uh, it is a PE 32-bit uh, or portable executable 32-bit executable file. Uh, and it gives you the file size, the creation time, uh, first seen in the wild. So the date it was first uh, discovered or detected and the various names it is uh, known or associated by. Um, so you can use uh, various sites like uh, virus total or hybrid analysis or you can search uh, you on your search engines using the md5 hash and this will tell us or will query all the sites that have this hash loaded in them so it'll give us any other reports by uh, other malware uh, analysis uh, uh, it'll give us any other malware analysis reports or any other sites that have information about this piece of malware so i'm going to paste and i'm just going to search for this uh, piece of malware and immediately you can see we have uh, for uh, the fair IT site here. So again, if we open that up, it'll give us more information about uh, this piece of malware. So again, it gives us the file name, uh, the full analysis is given here. And uh, you can uh, you can actually view the screenshots of this site. I will leave this uh, in the description section if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, so there we are, you get the information like the file info. In info. So again, uh, you can you can perform this you can perform the static analysis uh, using the various automation tools. However, when it comes down to uh, looking for strings or searching for strings, uh, that's where we need to take it. Uh, we need to approach it manually. Um, so that is how to perform a uh, basic hashing on your malware samples and how you can use the hashes for identification purposes. So now you can identify that piece of malware uh, uh, with its appropriate hash. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I'll be seeing you in the next video when we'll be getting started with strings.